Hey there everybody and welcome to my darkroom. Alright, so today we're going to be developing our 35mm film just like we said. But one of the first things we need to do when you're developing a film, you need to know what your development times are. And there's an easy way to do that and that's by using this handy app here that I go to on my phone. You can go to this on the web I and mean, actually there's an app for it, but it's free on the internet so all it is is the digital truth photo.com and it's just a development chart and it's so simple because you literally just go by and select your film type and your developer and you end up with all of your times so for us we know that we use an Xtal film or an Xtal developer sorry and then for our film today we are using the T-Max 100 so we're just going to go down and we'll see if this is under T-Max or if it's under Kodak. There we go. Look at that. T-Max 100. Hit done. And then we search. And then there we go. A full and comprehensive chart of all of the development times for all of the different dilutions and ranges. So it's a good note to point out when you're doing film. Um, even though you shoot something with a 100 speed film, you can shoot it um, steps higher and lower than what the film was intended for and then push process or pull process to get your desired effects so in the case of this we're able to shoot this at many many different speeds uh, from 25 to 50 ISO all the way up to 800 ISO we have charts on here showing us what we're gonna do but today we shot this at 100 and we're gonna develop it at 100 so we can scroll right to that section and also with this we are going to use a one to two dilution meaning one part of developer to two parts of water to make our actual film developing stock so we end up right here Xtal at a one to two at 100 speed it looks like it's given us 12 and a half minutes for 35 millimeter film and it also shows on here 120 as well as sheet film and it also gives a temperature as well as notes on development and those are always handy to click on alright so now we've gone on our development chart online and we've found out our developing time for our T-Max today and that was pretty simple it's just going to be 12 and a half minutes at a 1 to 2 dilution so that's pretty standard for a lot of films, especially when you're talking about just an ISO 100 film. So we're just going to go ahead and kind of chart that down so we have that information, not only for today while we're working, but also in the future if we ever develop this film again. All right. And now that we know our development time and we know our dilution, we can start mixing up our chemicals and get to developing. An easy thing to point out when we're talking about a dilution of our chemicals, that dilution of 1 to 2 applies to how much developer it actually takes to fill our tank fully to submerge the film. And in the case of these Patterson tanks, it actually shows you the exact amount you need for the film on the bottom of the tank. So in this case, we're doing 35 millimeter film and it says 290 milliliters to cover it. So we're just going to round up and say 300 milliliters. So when working with a 1 to 2 dilution, all that means is we're going to have one part of developer, which is 100 milliliters, and then 200 milliliters of water to give ourselves enough developer solution to cover our film. All right, so we have our development times and we know our chemical amounts that we're going to be mixing. So let's get that mixed up and we'll get to it. First off, we need 200 milliliters of water for our 300 millimeter solution. And I have a tank of distilled water right here next to me so I don't have to go over to my wet side. So we'll start off by filling up with 200 milliliters of water. All right, there's that. And now, in a separate container, we're going to take our developer and we're going to measure out 100 millimeters. So let's pour that out. And there we go, there's 100 milliliters of our developer. We're going to cap this back off and put it up out of the way. And now we're just going to take and mix this together. Set that off to the side. And we'll give it a little stir. 
in a lot of cases when we're doing this, there's going to be a few things that are important. Number one is going to be the mixture or the dilution of the chemicals we're using. Number two is the time that we're developing for. And then the third factor to all this is the temperature, the chemical itself. Based off whether it is warmer or colder, it'll affect how fast or how slow the chemicals work on the film. So obviously a colder temperature below what's ideal, which for us ideal is 68 degrees Fahrenheit. So anything below that ideal temperature, and it's going to extend our developing time. So we're going to have to extend our developing time, otherwise we're going to end up not fully developing the film. Um, in the other way, if our mixture is too warm, we're going to end up overexposing our film if we go for the recommended time. So that's something to keep in mind when I talk about the development time. That's all based off of that 68 degree Fahrenheit temperature. So lucky for us we have this nice little thermometer here made just for developing film. And I say that because you can see right there that we have a little window of green and that's kind of showing us that ideal developing range. You can see right now from stirring up our chemicals a little bit we're right in that range so it looks like we'll be good to go. We'll hold that developing time which is going to be 12 and a half minutes. So we've got our chemical ready and we've got our film ready loaded in our Patterson tank. So what we're going to do is just take our digital timer and just put in uh, 12 and a half minutes for ourselves. Um, it doesn't have to be a digital timer. You can do this on anything. You can use a wall clock, you can use an egg timer, you can use your cell phone. Um, we have this down here. It works great. I love it. So we have our time and we have our developer. So when we're ready, we're going to take and pour this in and that's when we're going to start our clock here. And then with this as well, what we're going to do is on every minute we're going to do a five second agitation of the film. Uh, during the whole developing process and that's just to make sure that we're adequately developing the film, that we're getting the chemical mixed up throughout the whole cycle and that we're making sure we're not leaving any air bubbles or air pockets or anything like that that would cause uh, anything weird to happen with the film. So let's keep that in mind and let's get it started. Alright, so we poured our chemical in. And we're going to start this first 30 seconds with just a constant agitation. And then one thing I like to do is actually kind of uh, bang the container against the desk a little bit here. And that's just to get any air bubbles clinging onto the tank out of there. So that's what that's about. It's always kind of good to give it a little tap to make sure all those air bubbles get out. And there we go. There's our first 30 seconds agitation. So now we're going to wait that one minute until, let's see if that was till 12, we'll wait till 11 minutes on the dot counting down here and then we'll give it another five second agitation. So also while we're counting down here we're going to take and get uh, two of the other parts of our developing process ready. We're going to need to get a stop bath going which is just going to be water which we'll use at the end of this 12 and a half minute cycle to stop the development and then we're going to get and pour out our fixer so once we run our stop bath we can put in our fixer and use that to fix the film and to make it ready for developing or not developing but for printing and for scanning alright so we're coming up on our 11 minute here so we're gonna give it five seconds of agitation and then wait another minute there we go pretty simple and like you can see for this Patterson tank there's just a little kind of swizzle stick here and that takes and turns that spindle and moves the film through our chemical so that's what we're doing when we're agitating and now we're going to continue to get our chemicals ready so we have our stop bath ready we have that sit here and then what we're going to do is we're going to measure out that same 300 millimeters of chemical for our fixer and we're going to set that further off so we don't mix that up with our stop bath. So we'll pour that out here. There we go. So there is our fixer. We're going to set that back 
out of the way. All right, so we're getting down toward the end here. We're gonna have one agitation left at one minute. And then at that point, we're going to uh, pour our developer out of our tank and we're gonna put in our stop bath, which like I said, just plain water, just to stop the developer from working on the film. Um, we're gonna do about a minute or two and that's basically two flushes of this. So we'll want one batch of water through, flush that, pour it out, dump in another, to flush that out and make sure we get all that developer off. And then once the developer's off, then we're gonna do our fixer for six minutes. And that's gonna be the same agitation cycle. We're gonna do five seconds every minute for the duration of our fixing cycle. And that's a standard amount for a fixer. No matter what type of film you're using, you're always working with a six minute fixing range, which is kind of standard. All right, we're coming up. All right, and that's our time, so let's get this poured out. All right, and in goes our stop bath. And we're not gonna time this. Like I said, we're basically just gonna kind of flush this out and then pour that out and do one more flush just to make sure we get that developer off of there. And then same thing, we're just gonna tap this to make sure we get any air bubbles out from our film and from our tank because any air bubbles are going to keep that solution from getting onto the film and stopping that developer. So, all right, let's get this poured out. And let's get in one more stop bath. There we go. And the same thing, we'll just swish this around. You can do it two ways with this Patterson tank. You can use your swizzle stick here or you can just take the whole tank and kind of swing it around and agitate it. All right, so there's our stop bath. Let's take this and pour it out. All right, now we're ready for our fixers. So like I said, let's take and put six minutes on our timer and we'll start it as we're pouring in our chemical here. And there we go, simple as that. And then we're just gonna do the same thing. We're gonna agitate. Make sure we get out any air bubbles. And we're just gonna agitate for that first 30 seconds. All right, good deal. So something to note, when we used our developer, we mixed it at a one to two, and then when we were done, we poured that out and that chemical is spent. We will not be reusing that. Um, our fixer is a little different. With our fixer, we always save the fixer. So when we're done with this, instead of pouring it out, into our receptacle, we're actually going to pour it back into our beaker here, and then we're gonna put that back into our main jug. Um, and that's basically just the saving for it. The fixer doesn't get exhausted just by one use. It can actually go 25 to 30 rolls. And also, since we're not diluting it, we can pour it back into the main jug and use that the same way. So that's what we always do with the fixer. It never gets poured out or wasted. All right, so we're getting down there on time here. We have one more agitation cycle before we're ready to pour our chemical back into our fixing jug. All right, coming down to the last seconds here. So same with our developer. Once that counter times out, we are just gonna pour our chemical back in. And you can see a little bit there, the color that that developer is taking. If you remember, poured it in before it was clear and now it has sort of a pinkish hue to it there we go so we pour that in there and then now at this time and point this is developed this is fixed so we can take this off and now expose this to light because it is now light safe and while we do that that makes it easier for us to now pour in our last stop bath so now we're gonna do uh, just kind of a final wash and we're just going to give that five minutes and that final wash is just to uh, once again same thing as we did with the stop bath for the developer just to get the chemicals off of the film to get any residue off of that film so when we hang it up to dry and then once we go to develop it or not develop it to scan it in or enlarge it we don't have any chemicals left over kind of hazing or fogging the film. 
So in the same way, we're just kind of pouring in our distilled water and we're just letting it soak. And you can see it's got quite a bit of color to it still. So hopefully by the end of that five minutes, we're gonna see that color turn more clear. And as we wind down here, there's one more thing we're gonna use, our photo flow solution. And the best way to describe this is just a supercharged dish soap. Um, and what it's gonna do is it's just kind of a wetting agent and it's gonna basically be like a spot-free rinse or a spot-free coating for our film. So when we take it out to dry, it doesn't get any water spots or anything like that. And when I say it's supercharged, we're gonna use just the tiniest amount of this to coat our film at the end here. You'll see there's that little bit that I poured in. And as we stir this up, You can already see how that's beginning to suds up. So like I said, we're basically dealing with a really amped up dishwashing soap. All right, there we go. So we'll get this out of the way so we don't get any water on it here. We'll pour this out, then we'll check this film out. All right, so there we have it. There is our 35 millimeter film. And as we pull this off of our spool, you can see the images there. So there we go. There's some of our images coming right off of there. Looks like this one turned out really good. You can see we have nice even tone on there. Um, if you'd start to see kind of what you call it ghosting or uh, you know darker or lighter areas picking up around the sprocket holes here that's where you'd know maybe if you had a light leak or if you had you know bad film or bad developer you'd see kind of irregularities here but you can see this guy is pretty uh, pretty nice and even throughout the whole whole range of film here really pleased with how this turned out this is gonna be really fun to ski so what we're gonna do is squeegee this film off and hang it up in our dark room and really low tech here when we hang stuff up we just use metal binder clips from office max and we put them on the bottom to weight the film and hold it straight and then we put it on the top to hold the film to our line and we're gonna let it dry um, just to dry get all the water off it let it kinda flatten out and take its shape and harden up because right now we just have our negative on here and it's still wet and that fixer hardened it up a little bit but if we were to touch this film right now we could end up smudging it still possibly so that's why you can see I'm holding it by the edges right now and never holding it directly on the actual film or on the negative itself and that's to prevent from smudging that image so like I said we're gonna squeegee this off hang it up and let it dry and then we're gonna put it on the scanner scan it in, and see what we got and show you guys the results all right, so here are our photos scanned in. And the first thing that you'll notice is this being an ISO 100 film, the grain is pretty small and not very noticeable. One thing with uh, higher ISO films though is you're gonna see a much larger grain most of the time and also a much more noticeable grain. And that's something a lot of people use to really kind of get a different look um, out of their photos. Uh, I like the way that higher ISO films look. One of my favorite uh, films to shoot with is actually a 400 speed ISO film and it's a little bigger grain but I really really like kind of the look and the texture of it. Uh, for this though, this 100 ISO Kodak was uh, more than great for these snapshots which are pretty much all just kind of family snapshots from this summer uh, with my wife and my son. So. Um, this was a little bit of a longer video, but thank you guys so much for watching, and uh, hopefully see you back again soon for more uh, darkroom tutorials. Thanks for watching. Bye.